People soaked in poison frequently develop skin cancers. It's the pelvic bones. And you have some renal this 27-year-old is suffering from colon cancer, rare in the Middle East, but common in Halabja. He's eaten food and water contaminated by chemical weapons. I think there's not much left for him till now. In such situations, a hopeless case, I think. This man's cancer has attacked his upper jaw, causing terrible deformity. This is seen really double vision and having some disorder of uh, walking as well. So it's likely to be having brain tumor. <coughs> what you see in front of you, all uh, these are part of those who've been exposed previously and still they are complaining. There is something terrible happening to Halabja's children. The doctors are recording unusually high rates of children's cancers. What is chilling is that these rates are increasing each year. Youngsters like these are three to four times more likely to get some form of cancer than elsewhere. On the third day, we receive news that our team is in danger. A warning comes from the Kurdistan Islamic movement. Through their spy network, the Iraqis know about your project. They don't want the situation in Halabja broadcast to the world. They may try to stop you. We have this information from inside the Iraqi regime. You must be very careful. The next day, we also hear that Iranian intelligence officers have been following us in Halabja. The Patriotic Union of Kurdistan provide us with 14 soldiers and a Doshka heavy machine gun. A number of people have been ambushed and killed along the road we travel each day from Suleymaniyah to Halabja. But despite the increasing danger, our investigation has to go on. Professor Gosden believes she might be close to a major breakthrough in solving the mystery behind Gulf War syndrome.